this choice of jumping from full-time to freelance was the best choice I ever made. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hi. vlog, episode number six. six. So in this vlog, what we want to do is we want to cover our individual journeys as freelancers, how we started, how we transitioned from full-time into freelance. I hope you enjoy this vlog story. The first coffee. Um, so I went to school in a school called McMaster. It was a, a school in a town called Hamilton. So I wanted to do a double major in multimedia slash communications. Uh, multimedia because I wanted to focus on photography and videography. College was a way of learning more of the theory-based work, but not really the hands-on te technical stuff of a camera, how to operate it. That was all self-taught in terms of photography and video. Uh, for school, it was more of a place to network and meet people that were also uh, like-minded in, in, in creative work, and video photography. Uh, but I think school was a way to just like figure out what I want to do in terms of a career, in terms of future, in terms of uh, what kind of job I would be getting. But even at that time, I had no idea that freelancing is a full-time thing. It was to me, it was more of like a, a herd of a industry, but I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know that photos could be turned into something that uh, brands could pay you for, and I didn't know that videos or photos itself is an actual full-time gig. Like brands would actually pay or have an amount of budget set aside to give to freelancers and pay them for for their work. My first paid gig ever for shooting photos was uh, shooting sandwiches. Uh, this job came to my sister as a referral. Her boss brother from Sydney uh, had a catering company that does sandwiches and he wanted me to shoot uh, literally the entire day of just sandwich product shots for his website, for his uh, e-commerce store. And so it was a free trip. So I was first year, so I had no idea, you know. I, I, I don't think I even had my own camera, but I had to borrow a friend's camera. And I literally traveled for a week, so a week off school, and shot sandwiches and got paid for it. So I joined Instagram in 2012. I had an Android LG smartphone. Um, I had no idea what I was shooting, so I, I, I shot a lot of family photos, chesties, I shot uh, food pics. And then the same year, I think I had like four retail jobs. I worked at Zara, I worked at FCUK, Guess, and Club Monaco. And so that was a way for me to have content for my Instagram because uh, they funded my outfits. So in the morning, I would go to the change room early and take a snap of my outfit and I post that on Instagram. After a full year on Instagram, where I started to get a feel of what I wanted to do in terms of photos, I shot a lot of architecture, I shot a lot of um, symmetry, and I got my first iPhone iPhone 5. So before I went to freelancing, I had three full-time jobs. First job was at a company called Herjavec Group, uh, founded by a shark from Shark Tank, Robert Herjavec. And so I was there for a year and a half, uh, managing Robert's um, Instagram accounts, Twitter accounts, and also his website. And so I would be creating, you know, those quotes on images where he like gives very inspirational quotes. That was me. Um, and so I would help him kind of like uh, construct his image online for his fans and for his audience. So that year and a half, I kind of learned how important it is to have a personal brand and how important it is to have a community slash audience to basically support your work. And so I was there for a year and a half and then I went to Hong Kong. So I moved to Hong Kong uh, for Hypebeast, for the job. I was here for about three to four months. And then I noticed that it wasn't really my style in terms of the branding that they had and it wasn't really what I wanted to be in. Um, I wanted more of a, I guess, experience in content creation, but also at the same time wanted to be more focused on not just fashion. Um, and so I left that job and then I was jobless for a little bit. I applied for ad agencies, I applied for 
I even applied for a company called Dyson where they make vacuums and hair dryers. So my last and third job was at a company called Digital Rev. Uh, if you don't know who they are, they're the biggest YouTube channel um, that does very silly uh, and comedic style of uh, camera reviews online. And so I was there part-time only for the first half a year because they couldn't offer me a full-time position. So I helped them curate their Instagram accounts um, and, and make it look nice. And so I was being paid part-time, so it wasn't enough money for me to live in Hong Kong. So I had to get other ways to make money. And so I was doing other freelance jobs. And so finally came when they offered me a full-time position as DOP, a director of photography. I was debating between should I stay digital rev full-time or should I do freelance full-time. We're trying to find a good spot to chat with you guys on the freelance thing, but it's really hard to find a quiet spot in Hong Kong. So I was thinking of doing it here, but there's quite a lot of people still. Take it up. Okay, so we've been looking for a quiet spot to shoot our podcast section, but it seems like every time we start rolling, there's a, there's a construction going on, there's cars, people talking, so this will just have to do for podcast listeners. I am so sorry, now people are yelling behind me. Um, but both Victor and I wrote ample amount of notes uh, just to reflect on our freelance uh, career. Uh, a lot of times I don't really look back, I just look forward and I always forget what happened in the past but I guess this has forced me to really think about my timeline so that you guys can see all the small little details and how we transition from full-time to freelance. So I also went into um, high school, into a fine arts background, that's where I trained in. And a lot, that's where a lot of my photography training comes from, is actually a fine art background. Uh, from high school, I was thinking about going into Pratt or Parsons. I was debating between going to interior design or going into fashion. But I think I secretly wanted to do fashion more, even though it seemed like a very anti-Asian kind of field to be going into. But anyway, so I ended up picking Parsons and moving to New York City. And we were also required to have a digital camera as part of the curriculum. So I had gone, I think it was a crappy Pentax camera or something, like a dinky little one. And uh, we had to use it to record things. But I also used it as a side to record some of my outfits, OTDs. At that time, Shooktopia, Lookbook, all these fashion community platforms started popping up on the internet. And I was part of Shooktopia under the name Stalo Man, um, where I would share my outfits. I would source all my clothes from uh, vintage stores and a lot from uh, Valley Village because that's the place I could afford a lot of clothing and a lot of unique clothing that wasn't like you know the Abercrombie or the American Eagle stuff and I started to form a community online just by sharing my outfits. 2009 that is when I graduated. I had graduated in the height of the recession so my logical thinking was saying oh you know if all the finance people the banks are blowing up everything's in crisis I as a fresh grad am not especially in fashion am not going to find a job anywhere so I was thinking I'm like okay let's go travel so I went to Hong Kong and used it as uh, my home base to basically fly to Seoul to Tokyo Kyoto and all these places and at the time my mom was like I think you should apply for a job so to appease her because I wanted to go to Taipei still I basically applied for one job and that one job was for an online fashion company called Yes Style they do online fashion they sell a lot of uh, Asian fashion to people in the States and Europe and so after I applied for that one job, I got it. So I basically went back to New York City because I had just moved to Stuy Town and packed up everything and moved it all back to Canada. And then I moved to Hong Kong. I worked in Yesel for two years. At that time, I was in an editorial position and then transferred over to being a fashion analyst for them. Uh, we're doing a lot of things with Soul Fashion Week and K-pop and all that stuff. But to me, I wasn't, I was kind of bored after a while, especially um, since I didn't like sitting in an office for a long period of time and I felt like I was just clocking in hours and just not doing much. So I got a little bored. So on the side to kind of channel all my creativity, I started uh, my blog, Sam is Home. After work, I was also like trying to like put all this creative energy into like my baking. So then I created a baking blog and I also had Style Nomad, which is a Tumblr account that I had for all my OOTDs. So I thought, why not, you know, combine them together 
and create a website dedicated to what I love doing, which is fashion and what eventually became flat lay. So that's where I started to learn how to flat lay, it was actually just from all my baking experiments, blogging about it and realizing, oh, maybe I can place it in a nicer setting or use nice light and a camera to shoot everything with. So that is how I started Sam's Home. So basically I created Sam's Home as a, a way to network with people before I start, I decided to quit my job because I was thinking if I ever want to leave and do my own thing, it is best to have created a relationship and network of people who I know and who know me instead of just, you know, going uh, from full time to cold turkey without any connections, without people knowing who the heck I am. So that's how the blog uh, Sam is Home really helped me and my career. Um, when I came out, I was also trying to cut back my expenses from a practical standpoint. So I even created this thing called the 1330 challenge where I actually stopped shopping for uh, I think like seven months or something like that. And I decided why not make it uh, a challenge to myself creatively. So basically I stopped shopping for fashion because I was doing fashion blogging at the time. And I decided I would take 13 pieces and clothing for 30 days and to show people how you can remix and, and mix and match all your clothes uh, to be creative but also be sustainable. So after that project, uh, me and a friend who I made from the blog uh, Tanya, we decided, hey, why don't we look into uh, eco fashion and sustainable designers who are doing cool things, who are creating clothes that aren't very granola or very yoga-like, and we created a brand, A Boy Named Sue, which was an online eco fashion company. And at that time, I was thinking, okay, I can make a little bit of money starting this company off. We were hoping, I was hoping to even make 9,000 Hong Kong dollars a month. And I realized after starting that company that it was actually really, really, really hard to pull money out of it in the first few years. So at that time, my friend, uh, Carmen Chan, she's a photographer now based in LA, she had told me, hey, why don't you take um, you know, photos from your blog? I was doing a lot of, I was still doing a lot of still life and flat lays from my baking. I was also doing OOTD still and doing a lot of these blog, blog posts for, I wasn't making money off of the blog. Um, but it was just for fun and she was like, hey, why don't you take all these uh, pictures you took, put them in portfolio and I will pitch you to uh, agencies like SCMP and uh, all these magazines to create content and I will be a photographer, you can be a stylist. And I was thinking at that time, I'm like, I didn't know a prop stylist was a job. So I was like, oh, okay, I have nothing to lose. So I think I created a PDF of basic images I had done for flat lays and all that stuff. Um, and I put it together as a portfolio. And my first job as a freelancer was, uh, was prop styling for a local lingerie brand. Um, and it was really funny because they actually rented my apartment out, which was a room. And then I had this model there in lingerie, like flitting on my bed. And I, I thought this was, this is great. Like I was doing a really, really random job. It was really interesting. And I was learning a lot from it. Um, so that's how I started uh, my freelance process, but it was really just to survive because I was also creating this online fashion company that was still trying to get traction from and I wasn't making money off of it So I had to find other ways to make money. In 2012, my friend uh, and I decided to go to Korea together for a, another friend's wedding and we were sitting in a cafe and I distinctly remember her telling me about this cool new app that I should get which was called Instagram and she was like, hey, you should get it. It's a really cool photo sharing app. But to me, I was like, I already have a blog. I don't really need uh, another app to create more content on. But she was like, oh, you should get it. So at that time, she took my phone, downloaded Instagram, downloaded Twitter, which I still don't use, um, onto my phone. And so I had it, but I was really on and off it until around, I guess, 2014, when I actually went full on into, uh, into Instagram. I was doing two jobs at the same time, which was my eco fashion company uh, stable I think we did that for about three to four years and on the side I was also doing freelance but I always felt bad pursuing my freelance work when my other startup was still a baby but at the same time like I needed to make the money so I was really pushing hard into the freelance work um, I think at that time I was also at a really low point around 2015-16 I was trying to get more jobs, but at the same time, I got a lot of rejections from a lot of companies. A lot of companies would ask me for, for quotations and stuff, and they were like, oh, I know you're too expensive, or we decided to do something else, or like, there's a lot of stuff. 
And I remember getting into a really depressed state back in 2015 because I was like, at that time, I was like late 20s. I'm like, I don't have a stable career. Uh, my Instagram, I think at that time was like 4K or something. I forgot. It was like 4K followers. Didn't have a boyfriend at that time. And I was like, I feel like my life is just like, what was that? <laughs> I feel like my life is just like, like compared to all my other friends, I had no idea where I was going. And I felt like everyone was so much further ahead of this adulthood game than I was. And so I remember I was in a really depressed state. Also, like my grandfather wasn't doing well. And it was just like a bunch of other stuff. Um, so come 2016 was when I really just focused on the freelance. We decided to um, close down or just like temporarily press pause on my eco fashion business. And so I went full to, like full on freelance because that was the only way I could make money. And then in 2016 was, July of 2016 was when I met Victor. No, June. June, something like that. No, June. Which brings us to talking about how we started working together. In 2016 for episode six. Yeah, so I think it was in June was where I met I officially met Sam for the first time near Father's Day. Um, I didn't know the time that we did the same thing, literally like photography, creative field. But for her it was freelancing, but for me it was entirely just full time at a position that was paying me every month at a guaranteed income. The first time we ever kind of worked together uh, was for a luxury travel brand. Um, they had this huge cloud animation mascot and they literally sent me this huge stuffed animal that was huge and I needed help because it was just like, it was the height of summer, it was really hot and I had to bring it around Hong Kong and shoot it in different destinations. So I asked him because he was so innocent and I was like, hey, I'll treat you to lunch if you help me bring this tricked. cloud along. And I didn't even end up treating him to lunch. I was just like, oh, thanks. And that was it. He was like, what the heck? I think I treated you to coffee later. Yeah, I treated you to coffee at Coffee Academics. So that day, yeah, I remember it was like super hot and humid. I had to lug this huge thing around like Hong Kong to Discovery Bay. Or is it Discovery? Repulse Bay. Repulse Bay. And we shot and shot and then that was my first week in Hong Kong. The first time I ever worked with you, we got some compensation was for Moleskin. Yeah, Moleskin. So Moleskin approached me to promote uh, their, uh, what they call ID bag, which is a big backpack. And I had to cover something called A Day in the Life Of. I had asked Ken from Lightsy Studio to create the video content that they wanted. And I asked Victor to create the Instagram photos. And uh, at that time I asked him like, hey, how do you want to be paid for it? How much are you going to charge per photo? And he was like, oh, well, since we're dating, I don't want to, I feel like it's bad to charge you for it. But like for me, I, I feel like if you're doing something that I benefit from financially, he should be compensated. So I said, okay, in that case, like since it's our first job together, how about I buy you the new map at that time, which was the new Mavic, Mavic One drone. And he was like, sure, I'll, I'll take that. So then what happened was he shot like, I think a series of three to five photos for me or something. Yeah. And then instead of paying him, I bought him the drone. And that was like our first gig together. But it was crazy because the, the drone was like, what, 7K yeah. Hong Kong dollars. Yeah. And he, right after getting the drone and taking a few photo photos and posting on Instagram, he immediately got a few jobs posting yeah. Insta like drone photography. And I felt like in just drone. one job, he was able to yeah. like make up for what I paid for it yeah. with his own income. It's a good investment. It's a great investment. Yeah. Um, but that was because that's when drone photography had just taken off. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> and so um, I guess our first big break in terms of a paid job together was for W Hotels. Uh, they had contacted me out of the blue and were like, hey, we're going to open our Shanghai branch next month. Uh, we'd love you to come along and take some social media content for us. Uh, at that time, where I was doing the white label content, and so then I was like, oh sure, maybe that's something that me and Victor can do together. Yeah. Because at that time, our Instagrams were still very separate, separate and very different. Yeah. Like Victor, Victor's focus was on symmetry, 
um, architecture, architecture landscape. landscape and stuff with like a tiny little person. I was more focused on my prop styling side, which was still doing a lot of flat lays, coffee shots, very lifestyle driven mm -hmm. stuff. And I told the client, uh, W, that it would benefit them if they hired both of us together. Because especially for hotel, uh, hotel and destination photos, they need a mix of that uh, right. close up yeah. product shots where you have like, you know, like all the little, flat um, the flat lays with the, the food the on the heads. bed and everything. But you also need the wide shots, which is all the interiors, the hallways to highlight the beauty of a, of a new hotel. Yeah. So we traveled to Shanghai for that. I think it was a three day party, but we stayed there for six to create uh, also some destination photos for them. And I think that was like the first time we ever felt like that was a really amazing client because yeah. they really allowed us to push our creativity yeah. to the max. They also helped us a lot and we just felt it was a really great relationship starting off with this hotel brand. And it made us also realize that we can also um, do this for full time and for a lot of hotels. Yeah. yeah. So comes 2018 is my actual first full year that I left full-time position at any job and went completely full-time in freelancing. I realized that a lot of times when clients would email us, they would have us both in the email and say that they wanted to hire us both for hotels, for airlines, for food and beverages clients. And that was cool because it made me think that, hey, are we a team now? Are we like a package deal of like Victor and Sam, Sam and Victor, two dudes, or is it one guy, one girl? You never know, right? Uh, so it was cool to think that uh, 2018 was a year that we are a team. We also uh, began to really try to focus in on our freelance work. I think we started to create a niche for ourselves, which was into the travel and hotel uh, social media content creation because what we were showing on our Instagram feeds was what brands wanted to see on their own channels. So I think we started to focus on that. Also in 2018, I began to focus more on my own personal brand as opposed to just being a content creator or being someone who's behind camera. I think a lot of times the misconception is that I don't shoot, but actually I do shoot and I've been shooting, at, like I was talking to you about my journey into freelance, I was always uh, behind the camera. But in 2018, I decided that maybe it was time to let go a little bit of that and um, since Victor is such a great photographer, that I would be in more of the shots and that I can also work on relating more with my audience and uh, the people on Instagram and on social media. So that's where I transitioned more to um, letting him kind of dictate or like trusting him on creating the ideal photo where I was more the one who was uh, I guess figure out location, I guess the creative direction of a photo and he was doing the more the execution but then I would be the one who would be editing but he was actually the one because uh, up until the point where I had met Victor I was still shooting in JPEG and I'm still editing on Photoshop which is such a new thing to do but I was I met I had, I had no idea I had to do Lightroom and even at that time Ken was telling me you need to transition to Lightroom, it's a lot easier, you have like all these digital files saved in this huge library and I didn't really learn Lightroom action until one year ago. So I feel like I've also evolved, um, evolved even in my, uh, even though I'm not shooting as much as I used to, I'm still um, able to develop my skills even in the editing part which I think has greatly helped me over the past year of learning Lightroom. Since Victor was kind of new in this whole journey of freelancing, you know, creating quotations and invoices, yeah, how to, like at that time he literally, like still, his desktop is literally just a mass of quotations and the numbers of each quotation and invoices say Random. like one or something. <laughs> I'm like, how are you supposed to know how much money you're making every month? Like, don't you need to figure out all the stuff? So then I had helped him, because I had also hired a friend to help me do the my accounting and all on a Google Sheet or yeah. whatever. And so I had helped him set up all his invoices and all his quotations so he could figure out how much he was making. To know that this first full year of freelancing, I could do this full time and I could see myself doing it for a long period of time. Yeah. After his first year, I was like, this is crazy. Like. I felt like I was the teacher and he was a student and he was already overtaking me in the first year. So I guess I had to get over myself, you know, in a way, because I was like, yo, he's making so much money and I feel like 
I'm always up and down. Like this freelance journey is like sometimes you're making a lot, sometimes you're making nothing, sometimes you're just waiting for clients to pay. So it's like just like a very up and down journey. I think for the me. scariest part is just not knowing your next job and not knowing your next paycheck. Yeah. But in a way, it's fun because you have that creative freedom to do whatever you want, and you have pretty much your your boss is you yourself. Um, so you don't limit yourself in the hours you work. It could be whenever uh, you're called for. Um, but I think that this choice of jumping from full-time to freelance was the best choice I ever made. So to end this vlog, we have three simple points on switching from full-time to freelance. The first point is that freelance is not for everyone. Some people love full-time jobs. They love sitting in the office from 9 to 5. But for some people, they love creative freedom. So freelance yeah so for example like I've been working freelance for six years and Victor's only been doing it for one year and I've seen him work at work with companies like Google and Facebook creating wallpapers for the Chrome OS whereas I took a lot of time to find my direction and what I wanted to do so every person is different when it comes to their freelance journey and you shouldn't compare with other freelancers because everyone's different so number two is treat it like your baby. Yeah, so I mean, if you're thinking about going to full-time freelance, it's not easy. It's definitely a lot of hard work, a lot of late nights, um, but you have to treat it like your baby, like Sam said. You have to make sure that you put enough hours in it and make sure that whatever content that you put out is your best content because clients out there will look at the content and that would be your platform that they would decide whether to hire you or not. So there has to be a level of professionalism, even though you might have started off as a hobby, but think about it as a career. Takeaway number three is that start today. So if you're a full-timer looking to jump into freelance, we highly recommend uh, getting your work out there even before you quit your job. For us, it was joining Tumblr or starting a blog or getting on Instagram so that you can get your name out there and find a like-minded community before you jump into full-time freelance. So I hope this video helps you guys in learning about how we start as freelancers. And as always, remember to like, comment, and su subscribe. We hope you enjoyed this very, 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 very long format uh, video. It is really long because it's our vlog stories combined of six years or eight years of our work. So we hope you enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye. Bye.